Hey, what's going on everyone? Chris back with another video. Today we have a new unboxing with a new device. This is the Motorola or Moto G6. Um, Motorola recently announced three new devices, the Moto G6 Play, the Moto G6, and the G6 Plus. Um, the G6 is gonna be what will be coming to the US. I'm not sure if the Play Edition will or not, um, but the G6 itself can be picked up on Amazon, it can be picked up at Best Buy, it can be picked up at Verizon, at uh, Project Fi, which is where I purchased mine. Um, Project Fi actually has the deal for $1.99 when you sign up for service. I think Verizon also has that deal. Um, this, so this does work completely unlocked. Um, it works on GSM and CDMA, so Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, it works Project Fi as you expect. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into the unboxing. We'll go over the phone, the specs, and uh, so for one one ninety nine to uh, two fifty is what you're going to be paying depending on your carrier and where you purchase it. Um, so simple on packaging here. We'll pull out the device real quick. Set that aside. We got a little pamphlets here. So we got uh, Read Me. We got a SIM ejector tool. We got a Motorola safety, legal, regulatory information, and then a Project Fi get started guide as well. Um, so tells you how to uh, turn it on, things like that. Is there a Project Fi SIM in here? No, so that's interesting. Um, huh. So here is the charging brick, which does support quick charging. I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, a 19 or 16 watt charger, which is great. Here is your charging cable, which is also in black. And this does support USB-C. So budget device that uh, supports USB-C, as we can quickly glance and take a look at right down here. This is a glass bill phone. And surprisingly, this is a very nice feeling phone as well. All right, so here we are. Here is the device, all glass build. So this is kind of uh, the design is coming down from the Moto X4. Um, this is Motorola's first budget device that has an all glass build and also a USB-C port. So you have your dual camera set up here. One is gonna be a five megapixel sensor. The other is a 12 megapixel with an um, aperture size of f1.8. The uh, aperture size is actually pretty, uh, pretty large for this price range. You do have your LED flash, um, minimal Motorola branding on the back, and then, then you do have like a curved, kind of a Samsung style curved back here. Up top you do have, it's so reflective, you do have a mic and then you have your uh, SIM ejection, your SIM tray. And then you also do have micro SD card supports up to 256 gigs. Down at the bottom, you do have a headphone jack. So that's still great to have your USB-C port. Up front, you do have a fingerprint scanner, which is a very odd place to have it. Um, it's actually very small. If you look at my thumb size, normally they're circle or on the back. The Moto G6 Plus actually has the fingerprint scanner on the back built into the Motorola logo. Here is another mic. Motorola branding, this just looks really busy and, um, and ugly to me, to be honest. Um, pretty big bezel. Up front, you do have a eight megapixel front facing camera, your earpiece, and then you do have an LED flash for the front. So when you're taking selfies, you can actually uh, use that flash to help brighten uh, your scene. Now this is running with three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage with a Snapdragon 450. So definitely a lower end uh, processor. And uh, this does come with Android Oreo out of the box. Let's go ahead and go through the setup real quick. Now actually, I wonder if Project Fi or Google put in a Project Fi SIM inside here. Hey, would you look at that? They did. Uh, so yeah, so you'll get your Project Fi SIM inside the uh, the SIM tray. So just a little uh, heads up there. So here we can see the the SIM tray, which is Nano SIM, and then your micro SD card up there. So we'll go ahead and just put this right back in. 
the screen is actually pretty bright for a device of this price point. Um, here we have uh, unlock at a glance, so you do have face unlock feature on this as well. We'll go ahead and just unlock the fingerprint. All right, and it gives you the option to bypass the lock screen by pressing the power key. It'll basically take you to the your home screen automatically without showing your notifications. All right, so we are brought to the home screen, which is a, a very minimal stock Android-like uh, launcher with the swipe up gesture to bring up your your app drawer. And then you do have your standard quick settings, just like an Android Oreo. Let's go into settings, system, about phone. And we can see this is currently running Android 8.0 with a March security patch. And we can see just how bright the screen is getting, which is actually very harsh on the, the camera. Unfortunately, there's no newer Android security patch, no new updates, so this is uh, how it's going to be for you more than likely if you get it uh, anytime soon. Um, so if we go into display, let's take a look at that. We do have a color mode, which allows you to change the color temperature of the white balance to a more warm or cooler temperature, depending on your preference. Um, we'll leave it at natural, standard, and then vivid. So you can see here when we go to standard, the colors change and get more vibrant um, just slightly. You do have standard display size settings and really uh, pretty basic settings, nothing really out of the ordinary. There is no uh, NFC, so you're not going to have Google Pay, uh, mobile payments or anything like that, which is unfortunate. But for this price point, that's kind of one of the trade-offs. No wireless charging, um, as you might expect for this price point. So there's no real no benefit for the glass, uh, glass back more than just aesthetic and design. But it is definitely really reflective. And you can see kind of nice uh, design as far as how the glass is refracting the light just a little bit there. Fingerprint scanner is actually working uh, decently. Not the fastest, but it definitely does get the job done, as you can see there. And now we can go into the Moto app, which allows you to customize various gestures um, as far as a night display. So basically reducing the, the blue light from the, the screens to help you sleep better at night. You can turn that on, set it to a schedule, and increase or decrease the intensity there, which is normally built into the Android uh, settings anyways, such as like on Pixel and other various devices. Um, it gives you option for storage. So out of the box, this comes with about uh, 25 gigs available out of the 32. Um, so very minimal apps. There's no bloatware really at all besides Google services, and there's the Motorola settings and uh, Dolby Audio there. And since I did purchase this up on Project Vi, you do get the Project Vi app built in too. Um, we do have Moto Actions here. Now this is the some of the special secret sauce that Motorola does with their devices. Um, we do have a quick button navigation, which allows you to use this um, fingerprint scanner pad to go back and act as your navigation. So we can go home by tapping on the sensor we can go back by swiping, or we can open recents by swiping from left to right. So if you press and hold, we takes you to the lock screen, launch assistant, and press and hold as well. No thanks, we're not gonna wanna turn that on. I like the standard navigation buttons as it is. So we do have a, the ability to chop twice, basically using a chop motion to turn on the flashlight, which has been something Motorola has been doing for many, many years. A very quick and convenient uh, feature to access your flashlight when you're up at night or something like that. So we can twist twice to open the camera app, which is right there, which is actually another convenient feature. As you can see, it works there. So let's test that at the face unlock here. There you go. It just took a split second.
to recognize my face. All right. Oh, that's maybe the lighting in here is not the best. So now it unlocks. Yeah, it's not the, the most uh, convenient, nor the, the most consistent, as I can see right here. It takes a split extra to unlock. Depending on your lighting, it might be better. I might need to re-recognize my face, but uh, I'll check this out in a full review and let you all know how that differs. So let's go back into the Motorola settings here. You can pick up the device to stop ringing when an incoming call is coming through. You can flip your phone over face down to silence a phone call. So that kind of mimics a little bit of uh, what the uh, Android P is going to be in incorporating. So basically when you flip your phone over face down on a table to put your phone into do not disturb, but this is slightly different. And a motor display, you do get your night display. Atten uh, attentive display basically um, keep your when your screen is on and you, your face is detected basically it won't dim or turn off or anything like that um, moto display basically an ambient display um, moto voice um, just commands things like that so the overall, there's some of the, the features and mo the Motorola additions to the device, but overall, this is a very near stock Android experience. Um, as you can see, pretty responsive overall. Of course, I don't have any apps loaded on here just yet. So I'm gonna be doing a full review on this. I'm gonna spend some time with it, see if it's uh, worth your while, put it up against some other devices in the price category, like the Honor 7X. Um, which is $199, um, and uh, we'll see which one prevails and which one I would uh, should recommend. So the charging brick does support up to 15 watts uh, turbo charging um, for the Motorola, so quick charging is capable, which is nice. This has, unfortunately, only a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, so it's not the biggest. Um, I believe the Honor 7X has a 3,300 or somewhere around there. Um, and given this size phone, this is a 5.7 inch LCD uh, display, which is a 1080p resolution, so 2160 by 1080. Um, so that's perfectly fine. No issues in regards to or complaints. No issues or complaints regarding the, the display. It gets plenty bright, as we can see here, and also gets uh, decently dim as well. So I suspect battery life to be decent, um, gonna be okay. I'm gonna guess maybe around uh, four and a half, maybe five hours on a good day screen, uh, screen on time. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the camera here real quick. So you have your standard uh, picture taking mode and then you have a auto uh, object detection recognition as we can test out here. Definitely takes a couple of quite a long time is recognizing the object and you can see this little loading bar around it, which that is completely inconvenient. Waste of time, I would not even worry and try ch uh, checking that out. We do have your settings here, spot color, panorama, portrait, some filters. Um, we got a quick capture, just like we went over. Here is our different settings for your camera, four by three, 12 megapixel, assisted grid, tap anywhere to capture. Uh, you do have that. Um, video recording, we do have HD um, 1080p at 60 frames a second um, and then 1080p at 30 frames a second. This does support uh, video stabilization, so EIS. More than likely, that's why it's set at 30 frames a second. Um, is if you change it to 60, you more than likely you won't have the, uh, uh, the video stabilization there. So just a quick fair bit of warning there. And so we can see here. Touch to capture is not working. Let's go ahead and all 
All right, there's that. And then we have our video swap swiping between or switching between apps does take a second, as you can see there. And then you have C video stabilization on or off. You're gonna to wanna to have that actually turned on. So now let's actually go to settings real quick and change that um, video stabilization or that video resolution to 60 frames per second. See, now the, um, just like I thought, and just like I said, um, you lose the video stabilization when you go to 60 frames a second. Let's take a look actually at that front facing camera with the flash. So here we are, there's the front facing camera. You do have a, a beauty mode with um, auto or you can turn it completely off, which is nice. You do have HDR um, on the front facing camera, which is also nice. And then here you see there's the flash. So let's go ahead and just turn that on real quick. There's the flash, you saw that up here in the right hand corner. And that will be nice for low light situations so you can have that on auto or completely turn it off, whichever you choose. There you are, there you guys have it. Um, the Moto G6, the glass-backed phone, first of its kind. Again, pick it up, 200 bucks on Project Fire, Verizon, if you have them, um, you can purchase it perfectly unlocked, it'll still work on any carrier. Um, or I'm going to leave my link down to Amazon, which you can pick up the Amazon edition basically for about like $230. Um, it will come with Amazon apps preloaded, um, but that's, I guess, maybe one of the things you get from buying on Amazon. Thank you all for watching. I'll leave the links down on the description where you can pick this up on Amazon. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, let me know, ask away your comment and I'll do my best to help you out. There is, I believe, only one color at the moment. There might be another color, color later on, but uh, this is the black model. Thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.